there. Then with regard to the continuation, point number 11, then Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah, he said, وَأَلَمْ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهُ أَنَّ الْكَلَامَ فِي الرَّبِّ تَعَالَى مُحْدَثٌ وَهُوَ بِدْعَةٌ وَضَلَالَةٌ وَلَا يتكل وَلَا يُتَكَلَّمُ فِي الرَّبِّ إلا بما وصف به نفسه عز وجل في القرآن وما بين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأصحابه فهو جل ثناؤه واحد ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير ربنا أول بلا متى وآخر بلا منتهى يعلم السر وما يعلم السر وأخفى وهو على عرشه استوى وعلمه بكل مكان ولا يخلو من علمه مكان The saying of Imam Rahimahullah And know, may Allah have mercy upon you That speculative speech, kalam about the Lord, the Most High is a newly introduced matter and it is an innovation and misguidance Nothing is to be said about the Lord except what He, the Mighty and Majestic, described Himself with in the Quran and what the Messenger وسلم, explained to His companions. <coughs> so He, the Majestic in renown, is one. Laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sami al basir. The ayah from Surah Shura, 42nd Surah, Ayah 11, with the explanation. There is nothing like Him, and He is the All Hearing, the All Seeing. Our Lord is the first without any when and the last without any end. He knows whatever is secret and whatever is most hidden. He has ascended over his throne and his knowledge is in every place and no place is free of his knowledge. <coughs> Sheikh Fawzan said, Hafizullah in explanation, his saying, أن الكلام في الرب تعالى محدث وهو بدعة وضلالة is saying speech kalam rhetorical theology or theological rhetoric with regard to the Lord the Most High is something new a newly introduced matter and it is an innovation and misguidance Sheikh Fawzan said meaning Speech with regard to the self of the Lord, the perfect and most high. Kalam, theological rhetoric. With regard to the self of the Lord, the perfect and most high. And with regard to his names and his attributes, is a newly introduced affair. It was introduced by the people of misguidance. Those who do not submit to the texts, and who do not have fear of Allah, the mighty and majestic. So therefore they speak about the self of the Lord, and they speak about his names and his attributes, and they deny and they negate that which Allah affirmed for himself, or that which his messenger affirmed for him. And they bring opinions from themselves, and they say, this is what is correct. <coughs> they speak in explanation of the texts with other than their correct explanation. Or they say, we don't understand them. In these texts about Allah's attributes, if they do the first one, they give them false interpretation, false explanations from themselves. Or the second course of action with them, or they say, we don't understand them. Her. They say, we leave and entrust them to Allah. We don't understand these texts at all. We just leave and trust them to Allah. We just read the word and we leave it to Allah. We don't understand it. The Shaykh said, and the speech of Allah and the speech of his messenger becomes just like foreign speech, non-Arabic speech, which the Arabs do not understand. And the, 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 upon the saying of these, Mufawwidah. 
I would say the texts of the attributes, they, we don't understand the meaning. We don't know what they mean. So in other words, those texts, they're just the same as foreign speech. It could be any language. It's just the same. We don't understand the meaning at all. Sheikh Fazan said, So what is obligatory upon the Muslims? Is that they continue upon the correct path. Upon the way of the Salaf. And that they do not give any attention to those people who lead, who mislead others. They don't give any attention to those people who mislead others. I mean, the people that, like these people with these two courses here. Those who speak about the texts, or the attributes, and give them false meanings from themselves. Or well, the second ones who say we don't understand the meaning of them. What is obligatory, the Sheikh said, upon the Muslims, is that they continue upon the correct path and upon the way of the Salaf, and that they do not give any attention to those people who mislead other people. Those who argue about Allah without any proof which He has given them. They dispute about the Quran and they dispute about the Sunnah. Their affair is just argumentation. So it is, so it is obligatory to beware of those people. Those people are not, are not muqtabi'een. They are not people who are followers of the Sunnah, followers of the truth. Rather, they are innovators who are just following their desires. As a side point here, then Sheikh Fazam moves on to the next uh, phrase. As a side point here, then Sheikh Salih al Suhaimi, he said on this point here, he said, meaning by that speech, that kalam, that speech, the negation here of Al-Kalam, theological rhetoric. Sheikh Sahimi said, meaning by that, the Kalam, the speech, which was introduced by the Jahmiya, with regard to delving into speaking about the attributes of Allah, without knowledge. But as for describing, giving as an attribute, that which Allah described himself with, or which his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave uh, described him with then this is something required this is something required and we shouldn't, shouldn't understand from this point we don't speak about our lord we don't speak about his attributes even with the truth in what the scholars have mentioned and what the salaf mentioned no, that is not what is being meant here rather the speech that's being spoken against is a speech introduced by the jahmiya the theological rhetoric speech based upon opinions and desires not upon text then Sheikh Fazan moves on to the next phrase. He's saying, "Wala yutakallamu fi Rabbi illa bima wasafa bihi nafsahu azza wa jal fi Quran." And nothing is to be said about the Lord except that which He described Himself with. He, the Mighty and Majestic, in the Quran. Sheikh Fazan said, "Hafidhullah." Having forbidden. Jidal, argumentation about Allah, the mighty and majestic. And khusumat, and arguments, debates about the names of Allah and His attributes. And forbidden these. He now explains what is obligatory. And they're forbidden, that's the forbidden, these matters, matters of aqidah and the like, and debates and arguing, argumentation. That's, that is forbidden. So now the author, he explains what is obligatory. The Shaykh said, and it is, that we affirm the Qur'an and the Sunnah, just as they came, upon their meaning, the meaning taken from the language, the Arabic language, with which the Qur'an and the Sunnah came down. And Shaykh al Fazan gives some examples from the attributes of Allah the Most High. He said, so al-ilm, knowledge, its meaning is well known in the language. Contrary to both of these other ways of, of the people. Contrary to the way of those who give false meanings. And contrary to the, to the way of those who say we don't know the meaning of any of these attributes. Just, they're just words that we don't know the meaning of them. So Sheikh said, contrary to both those ways, he said, So al-ilm, knowledge, referring to the knowledge that is the attribute of Allah the Most High. He said, so knowledge, ilm, al-ilm, its meaning is well known in the language. Likewise, al-wajh, the face, is well known 
and al ain eyes, and al yad hands, and al istiwa ascending, and al ulu being high above. All of these and their like, their meaning is well known in the Arabic language, in which the Quran came down. Whereas the people of misguidance, they say, this speech, when they say, when they come to the ayahs or the hadith of the attributes of Allah the Most High, what they say is, this is their phrase, لَيْسَ هَذَا الْكَلَامِ عَلَىٰ ظَاهِرِهِ They say, this speech is not in accordance with what is apparent from it. It's not upon its zahir. You can't take it in, uh, in accordance with what's apparent from it. Then Sheikh al mentioned, and then they divide into two categories. And they're, both, they're both upon that, an ayah, an ayah or a hadith about an attribute of Allah the Most High, that's what they say. We can't take it in accordance with, what's, with what's, what is apparent from it. Upon its zahir. We can't do that. Then they divide what they do next. Their next step, they divide into two categories. A category who say, نتوقف, We stop and withhold. And we say, what is apparent, the zahir, what is apparent, is not what is meant. But then we do not understand what is actually meant by it. Sheikh Fawzan said, and they are the Mufawwidah, the people of Tafweed. And both these groups are rampant these days. It's not some, like some sect that's disappeared. In fact, both these are rampant these days. You find them all over the place. And they call, they call all these people under different names and the like. But the, these beliefs, these ideas, all over the place. So the first category, so the first step they take, as Sheikh Fawzan said, they say, when they come to an ayah or a hadith, mention attributes of Allah, the Most High. First thing that they say, no, what's dahir, what's apparent from it, is not what is meant. Rather, they said the speech is not in accordance with what's apparent from it. And the second stage, they divide into two. First category of those, those who say, we withhold. And we say what is apparent, is not what is meant. But we do not actually understand what is meant. She said, they are the Mufawwidah. And a category, the second one, who are the Mu'awwila, the people of Ta'wil, those who give false interpretations. Sheikh Fazan said, and they are more in number. They are the majority. And the majority out of these two groups. More of them in the second category. They do Ta'wil, they interpret with other than their correct meaning. And they interpret the attributes away. They say, this attribute, it means something different. This attribute, it means something different. <laughs> so the first group say, what's apparent is not what is meant. We're sure it's not what is meant. What is meant, we don't know. We don't understand it. They are the Mufawwid, the people of Tafweed. The second group, the people of Ta'wil. So the majority, they just they misinterpret. This attribute is something else. Allah's hand, it means something different. Well, let's face it, means something different. Then the Sheikh said, So they went astray, and they lead others astray, and they preoccupy the people, and they fill up books with these debates and arguments and disputations which lead to nothing, which lead nowhere. So, what is obligatory? is at taslim is to submit to what occurs in the book, in the Quran and in the Sunnah with regard to the names of Allah and his attributes as was meant by Allah and his messenger because Allah knows best about himself he the perfect and most high and he knows best about other than himself and the most knowledgeable one from the creation about Allah is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam All the points the Shaykh is making here All of this being a, a refutation of both of these two groups If you consider carefully these points It's a refutation of what they say And the one who is most knowledgeable from the creation of Allah Is Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As for us Then our knowledge falls short we do not know many things. There are many things that we do not know related to our own selves with regard to the details, the details of our, of our bodies 
and the veins and the senses many things that we don't know about even about our own bodies our veins and our senses there are things which we do not know do you know the ruh do you know about the soul what exactly is it the intellect what is it <coughs> if you do not know something from your own body know something about your own self then how can you speak about the self of Allah the perfect and most high which is not known except to him he the perfect Shaykh Fazan quotes the proof يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَلَا يُحِيْتُونَ بِهِ أَلْمَا Surah Taha 20th Surah I 110 with the explanation he Allah knows whatever is in front of them and whatever is behind them and they do not encompass him with knowledge Shaykh Fazan said this is outside what we know and outside what we can imagine and no analogy can be made between Allah, the Perfect and Most High, and His creation. This would be a belittlement of Allah, the Mighty and Majestic. So He knows best about His Self and about other than Himself. And He is the one who is truest in saying and better in speech than His creation. As Shaykh al-Islam said in Al-Wasatiyah. In the footnote they mention, you can refer, this occurs in Al-Aqidah Al-Wasatiyah. So all of this being a refutation of those people who go on to speak about Allah. They don't accept what's in the text with regard to Allah's attributes, and then they go on and affirm things from their own intellects about Allah. They reject what's in the text, and then they affirm from themselves. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, His saying, وَمَا بَيَّنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لأصحابه. And what Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم explained to his companions. Shaykh Fawzan said, The issue of the names and attributes al asma wa sifat hinges upon the book and the sunnah. And their explanation is also in the book and the sunnah. And the language of the Arabs in which the legislation came down. And we do not go to the logic of Aristotle and Plato or so and so or such and such. In regard to names, Allah's names and attributes, it's like you see the people misguidance, that's what they do. They start quoting the logic of so and so. And these philosophers, they say this, and if you look at the philosophy of such and such, they're talking about Allah's names and attributes. She said, we don't do that. We do not go to the logic of Aristotle and Plato or so and so and such and such. This is a crime against the legislation of Allah, the perfect and most high. And it is a case of replacing the revelation with logic and ilm al kalam, theological rhetoric. And what fruit did theological rhetoric and argumentation produce for those people with regard to misguidance and ruin and loss and they did not reach any result and this is by their own admission and then the Shaykh he goes on to discuss some of the people of theological rhetoric kalam from the, Ash'ari, the heads of the Ash'aris and their like how they ended up how they ended up with their use of their, their intellect and theological rhetoric and where they ended up he said they expended their whole lives in debating and disputations and in the end they acknowledged that they did not reach any result and if only they had just submitted to Allah and to his messenger they would have found relaxation and therefore one of them said and then Shaykh al-Fazan he quotes three sayings from the heads of these people he said, and therefore there, one of them said, Nihayatu iqdamil uquli iqalun. Nihayatu iqdamil uquli iqalu. Wa aglabu sa'i al alamina dalalu. Wa arwahuna fi wahshatin min jusumina. Wa hasiru dunyana 
adham wa wabal wa adham wa wabalu wa lam nastafid min bahthina thula umrina illa an jama'na fihi qila wa qalu but one of them said admitting the result of using the intellects is just that the mind is tied in knots and most of the striving of the people is just misguidance and our spirits are forlorn as strangers within our bodies and all the results that come about in this world for us are just harm and an evil climate and we did not benefit from our studies for our whole lives except that we just gathered qila wa qalu they said and such and such said meaning idle speech we just gathered at the end of the day idle speech this is what they admitted these are the heads of them in a footnote they mention these lines of poetry here obviously an extremely rough, rough translation he said these lines of poetry are by of al-fakhr al-razi you can refer to dara' ta'arud al-aql wal naql and minhaj sunnah of shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah one of the great heads famous heads and Fakhr al-Razi of Kalam that was he admitted at the end of his life this is where they ended up it's all they ended up with all their debating and all their use of logic and rhetoric and the like that's how they ended up then Sheikh Fazan said so they came to a state of doubt and uncertainty and as for those who submitted to Allah and to his messenger then they were saved and at peace from this then he quotes a second quote. He said, And the people of misguidance say also, La amri la qad tuftu ma'ahida kun laha wa sayyartu tarfi bayna tilka al ma'alim. Falam ara illa wa di'an kaffa ha'irin ala dhiqnin aw qari'an sinna nadimi. That one of them said also, <coughs> Upon my life, I have gone around all of the inst- institutions of learning and I have looked upon all those places and I did not see except one who was putting his palm upon his chin in confusion or one who was striking his teeth in regret these people of theological rhetoric people of philosophy people of use of the intellect in mass of belief and all the institutions like that what do you come across except people who are in confusion total confusion or regret in a footnote they mention these lines of poetry by, are by Ash-Shahristani the author of the book Al-Milal wa nahl and again you can refer to Dara' to Arad al-Aql wa nahl and Minhaj al-Sunnah both of them of Shaykh al-Islam from Taymiyyah Sheikh Fazan comments and said he went round all the institutions, or he went round all the institutes of learning, the institutes of kalam, theological rhetoric, and logic, and debating. And he looked at them, he looked amongst them, examined them, and did not find in them that which could remedy the need to know. And he said, he quotes the third quote. And again, this is a quote, and there's mentioned a footnote from Ar-Razi, same as the first one, in his book An-Nubuwat. Well, you'll probably find it quoted from him in the book An-Nubuwat of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. That Ar-Razi, that he said, one of them said, Shaykh Fazan just left it without stating who said it. He said, he said, I have carefully ref- considered the different paths of theological rhetoric and the ways of the philosophers ways of the philosophers and I did not see them remedying the sick curing the one who has a a need for knowledge nor quenching the thirst of the person with extreme thirst and I saw that the closest path was the way of the Quran read with regard to affirmation إِلَيْهِ يَسْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ Surah Fatir, the 35th Surah, Ayah 10. 
I with the explanation. So he said, so after spending a life in the like of that philosophy and rhetoric and the like, the end of his life, all just going through all those different ways, end of his life, he said, I found the closest, the best way. It's just what's in the Quran. Well, I could have found out, could have opened myself in the first place and got that. He said, read with regard to affirmation, with regard to affirmation of Allah's attributes, what is to be affirmed for him. No need for logic, no need for philosophy, rhetoric. He said, read with regard to affirmation. Ilayhi yas adun kalimu tayyib. Surah Fatih, 35th Surah, Ayah 10. With the explanation, the good word ascends to him. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Surah Taha, 20th Surah, Ayah 5. With the explanation, the most merciful ascended upon the throne. He said, and read with regard to negation. Laysa kamithli hi shay. Surah Shura, 42nd Surah, Ayah 11. With regard to negation, read this ayah then. With the explanation, there is nothing like him. And, wala yuhaytuna bihi ilma. Surah Taha, 20th Surah, Ayah 11. With the explanation, and they do not encompass him with knowledge. The end of the quote from him. So as it occurred in the footnote, the end of the quote from Ar-Razi. One of the heads of them. And just to finish off with the last paragraph, Sheikh Razan said, and then we'll stop insha'Allah. His saying, فَهُوَ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ وَاحِدٌ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ The saying of the Imam, so he, the majestic in renown, is one. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ With the explanation, there is nothing like him. And he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Shaykh Fazan said, he is, he the perfect, one. No one shares with him, with regard to his self, nor with regard to his names and his attributes, <laughs> nor with regard to his creating and his actions, nor with regard to his worship. There is no sharik, no sharer, no partner for him. So why therefore tire yourself out? You are makhluq and he is khaliq. You are a created being and he is the creator. How can the created being encompass knowledge of the creator? The majestic and most high. So you, your role is just to submit to Allah and to his messenger. And not to dispute and not to argue. And not to tie yourself out and to tie other people out. This is what is obligatory and binding. And therefore the companions, they did not engage themselves in these unnecessary matters. And they did not withhold with regard to an ayah or with regard to a hadith. Rather they affirmed it and submitted to it and hold it and held it as their creed and belief. What, or held what it contained as their creed and belief. And they never had any problems arise ever. In the matter of creed and belief, companions, that was their way, and they never had any problems in this matter. So the matter is a matter requiring a taslim wal imqiyad, submission and compliance. And that we do not delve into matters of creed and belief in the way in which the people of disputation and the people of kalam, theological rhetoric, and the people of logic delved into it. such that the result was as they themselves admitted regarding themselves that they ended up in a state of bewilderment and confusion and not reaching any result as one of them said وَلَمْ نَسْتَفِدْ مِنْ بَحْثِنَا طُولَ عُمْرِنَا إِلَّا أَنْ جَمَعْنَا فِيهِ قِيلَ وَقَالُ as one of them admitted to be heard before the same quote we didn't benefit anything from our studies throughout our whole lives Except in, in the end, we just gathered idle speech. It was said, and they said, and Sheikh al said, meaning so and so said, and so and so said, and if he says such and such, then the response is such and such. That's all they ended up. Books filled with that, books and minds filled with that. So and so said, and he said, and if he says this, then the respond, you respond to him with that. And that's where we'll end in the middle of the point there, we'll end explanation of this point, but just very briefly with regard to. Sheikh Sahimi, Allah, then he said here at this point, then he made clear 
that it is obligatory to describe Allah with that which he described himself with obligatory to describe Allah with the attributes that, he, that Allah described himself with and that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described him with without tahrif without distorting the meaning without ta'til, without denying depriving it of meaning without taqif, without saying how and without tamfil, without likening the creator to creation in accordance with his saying he the most high لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ the same ayah from Surah Shura with the explanation there is nothing like him there is nothing like Allah and he is the all hearing the all seeing so لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ the meaning there is nothing like him this is nafi this is negation and وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ with the meaning and he is the all hearing the all seeing this is itba this is affirmation and so this ayah is a proof for both of these what? Negation of that which does not befit Allah for affirmation of His attributes, and it contains a proof for al ithbat al mufassal wa nafi al mujmal. Another important principle of the people of the Sunnah here. This same ayah contains a proof for detailed affirmation of attributes. Detailed affirmation, attribute, affirmation of this attribute and this one and this one. Affirmation of a hand and a face and so on. Detailed affirmation. I'll just go back to what the Sheikh said. Sheikh Sahimi said it contains a proof for detailed affirmation, al thbat al mufassal, and for an nafi al mujmal, and for general and concise negation. I mean, opposite to people in innova- innovation, they, they hardly affirm anything for Allah, any attributes. You hardly see them, but they give long lists of things which are to be denied. He, uh, things of, which are to be denied for Allah. They give long, long lists. He is not this, and he is not that. He's not this. He's not this. He's not this. As the Shaykh said, while the people of the Sunnah, this ayah here is a proof for the, the way the people of the Sunnah, al ifbat al mufassal detailed affirmation, and al nafi al mujmal general and concise negation. <coughs> because the, his saying, He the Most High, lays kamithli he shay, there is nothing like him, this is a general and concise negation. It negates everything that can be imagined or can cross the mind, it negates all of that for Allah. And وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ basir, And he is the hearing, the seeing. This is an affirmation in detail. Affirmate. This attribute, hearing, is affirmed. The attribute of seeing is affirmed in detail. And this ayah, the Shaykh said, is a tremendous principle with regard to affirming the attributes along with declaring Allah, the exalted and most high, free of whatever does not befit him. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad.